Today, we're going to discuss something massive. One of the biggest wealth transfers ever is about to happen. And you, as an investor, can position yourself to profit from this. Because in the next few decades, around $90 trillion worth of wealth globally is going to change hands from the baby boomer generation to the, to the millennials. And one particular asset class stands to profit from this or stands to grow substantially when this happens. So I hope you're cl paying close attention because what we're going to discuss in this video is going to be really important to you. It is going to be something that's going to play out in the next few years. And those that are positioning themselves to adv take advantage of this early are the ones that are going to uh, benefit from it the most. So um, my name is Mitchell Weirman and welcome to this video. Um, make sure that you hit the like button if you enjoy watching videos like this one where I break down complex topics and developments in the world of investing in crypto to help you to get an understanding of everything that's basically going on and to help you to get an advantage as an investor. And also, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be posting regularly throughout this crypto market cycle to help you to maximize your profits. And my goal is to help as many of you to cross the finish, finish line as possible and to help you to achieve your goals. Um, the next thing that I do need to say is uh, I need to make a disclaimer. It's a formality, but nothing that you see in this video is financial advice, should be considered to be financial advice. It's all just for educational purposes. I'm sharing my worldviews based on my own research, but you should always do your own research, check your own facts and make your own assumptions before making any investments. Now that we have those formalities out of the way, let's get started. So let me pull up my screen real quick. Yes. So the title of this video, get ready for the $90 trillion wealth transfer, which is the biggest wealth transfer we have ever seen. And in this video, I'm going to break down exactly what this wealth transfer entails and how you can profit from it as an investor. So if you may or may not know, our population right now globally, this chart that you're seeing here uh, are statistics from the USA, but uh, globally we are seeing a very similar phenomenon where in the 1960s we saw a very young population. So if you look here on the left side of this chart, you see all of these age groups from 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, 15 to 19. We had relatively a large percentage of the population that was below 20. So we had a very young population. And then slowly, uh, as we go up in age, we see a smaller and smaller percentage of the population. But now uh, what we're seeing is because healthcare is improving, uh, people are becoming older. And um, now that we are living in a society where we aren't getting that much children. So in Western society, like the birth rates are slowly getting lower and lower because people tend to choose more for their career. Um, and, and there's many more reasons why we're getting less children, why we are, uh, and, and why people are getting older. So those two factors combined uh, lead to the fact that we have a much older population and fewer young people that are actually in the workforce or that are going to enter the workforce uh, in the next few years. So that is a very different demographic situation than we've ever seen before, or at least in the past few decades. Um, so here you see aging worldwide population, Europe. So this first chart that I showed you over here, that is the expected change in population in, in 100 years time from 1960 to 2060 expected in the USA. But in Europe, uh, I'm originally from the Netherlands, um, we are seeing a similar phenomenon. Actually, Europe has the oldest population in the world. So here we see elderly percentage of elderly population worldwide is the benchmark is around 10%. Uh, however, if we look at Monaco, it's around 34%. Japan has a very old population, or at least comparatively to the rest of the world, 28%. 
Italy, 22%, Greece, 22.7%, uh, uh, Finland, 22%, Germany, 22.6%, Slovenia, 21%. So on average, Europe has 19% of its population consisting out of elderly people. North America, it's slightly lower, 17%. If you look at like developing regions like South America, uh, Africa, and Asia, you see lower rates like 9% and 4%. It has to do with two things. In those developing countries, they tend to get more children uh, at a younger age and healthcare is a bit worse. So people tend to uh, become less old. So those two factors combined have a result that there are much younger populations in those areas now if we look at japan japan like uh, we've seen before here like japan generally tends to be called out as one of the case studies when it comes to an aging population uh, because uh, yeah there's a lot of cultural stuff going on in japan for example uh, I, I i heard that amongst millennials or younger generations guys are not that interested in girls anymore they prefer playing video games or having artificial intelligence girlfriends or uh, even watching like uh, dirty comic books like they have some weird stuff going on in their uh, culture which has the effect that yeah the younger generation isn't really dating isn't really producing much kids but if you look at the healthcare system the quality of life it's still quite good so people tend to age really well in japan so again, if there's not a lot of babies and uh, the population is getting older, then you're dealing with a shrinking population where um, a bigger portion is becoming part of the elderly group. So if we look at the 1960s, so here are these green color codes, you see uh, the green segment is 0 to 14 years old. The blue segment, which is like the, the working population, is 15 to 64 years old. Then we have the yellow part of the population that's like uh, 65 years and older and here you see a few different slices in time so 1960 1985 2010 this is an extrapolation 2035 and 2060 so if you look at all the way up to 2010 you see that uh, the blue segment of the population so the working uh, the working group the working age group people make up the largest part of the population but as you go further down in time you see actually when they hit 2060 according to these predictions you see that the elderly population is actually larger than the working population and when you're dealing with a social welfare state where the working class is basically paying for the pensions of the elderly then you see that's not sustainable or they're going to be paying insanely high amount of taxes but then probably they're just going to migrate to a another country which leads to an even faster declining population so this is what western society is dealing with and well not only western society but developing nations also japan which is the main case study as well of an extreme situation is dealing with so we're having an aging population now, the baby boomers, which is a generation that basically came right after World War, uh, World War II, the Second World War. If we go back to this chart, you see that at that point in the 1960s, we saw a very uh, big, young uh, population. There were a lot of babies produced, hence the name the baby boomer generation. Um, and those baby boomers are now, let's say, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. And they are the ones that are currently the wealthiest generation uh, on earth. They have a lot of, they have a really great work ethic. They hold a lot of assets. And um, what you see, if we look at this, so here's a visual representation. So baby boomers, they own mainly real estate, equities and mutual funds, private businesses, uh, pensions, other assets, but mainly uh, if you ask a baby boomer what they're investing in, they would probably tell you real estate or stocks or bonds or those traditional investment vehicles. Um, soon, this wealth is going to be transferred to their heirs. So their heirs are mainly the millennials and the Gen Zs. 
so I'm a millennial. Let's say that my father passes away, then I inherit his wealth. So here is an article from CNN. So millennials stand to become the richest generation in history after $90 trillion of wealth is transferred to them by their parents. Um, here's an article by Forbes. The great wealth transfer from baby boomers to millennials will impact the job market and the economy. Because again, suddenly the millennials who are seen now as the poorest, brokest generation alive, they're going to suddenly become the richest generation on earth. But that's true inheritance. It's not through their own work ethics. It's not because they're extra smart, extra bright. It's true inheriting the wealth of their parents. Uh, here, an article by The Guardian, which states that millennials will be the richest generation ever. Uh, but who will get that wealth is down to luck. So again, it, it doesn't come down to work ethics, being smart, making the right moves. It's actually the luck is who are your parents and what family did you get born and how wealthy are your parents? Because that's basically going to determine how much money you're going to inherit. Um, okay. Now, ask yourself this question. When baby boomers are going to pass away, let's say our fathers, our mothers, our grandpas maybe uh, suddenly pass away and we receive this $90 trillion of wealth, what is going to happen with that wealth? What are millennials and Gen Zs going to invest that money in? Are they going to put it in real estate? Are they going to put it in stocks? Maybe luxury watches or something different. There have been a few reports out there which uh, have examined the fact that we millennials have a tendency because we have been, yeah, we've grown up in a digital world. We have laptops, phones, uh, we're connected to the internet all the time. And we have the tendency to prefer digital assets. We like the digital world, virtual stuff. We comprehend it, we like it. It feels very natural to us. Um, there is a report by Galaxy Digital, which is an investment firm in the digital asset space. And they basically uh, yeah, did uh, some research where they took a few different sources and they looked at the crypto adoption by generation. So if you look at the baby boomers, for example, according to their, to their research, around 6% of baby boomers currently own crypto. If you look at the Gen X, around 21% owns crypto. If you look at the millennials, which is the largest group of crypto adopters, they own around around 31% of them owns crypto. And the Gen Z, uh, yeah, which is a younger generation, maybe because they don't really have any wealth yet to invest. Maybe that's why it's lower. Um, but at least you see that the millennial generation, they are the biggest investors and the biggest adopters of, of crypto. Um, here you see crypto ownership by generation. So uh, if we look at baby boomers and older, you see that baby boomers own around $45 billion worth of crypto, Gen X $125 billion worth of crypto, and millennials and younger own almost $300 billion worth of crypto. So the reason why I wanted to show these two numbers is to show you that right now the millennials, that's the 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 part of the population, the segment of the population that's currently uh, the biggest adopter of crypto because we are digital natives. We love digital assets. We love digital stuff because that's what we know and what we're comfortable with. So let me show you this uh, chart and then let's conclude the video. So here you see the top 10 most valuable assets out there. On number one, we have gold, then we have Apple, we have Microsoft, NVIDIA, Alphabet, you name it. And the, the third, uh, sorry, the tenth in this chart is Bitcoin. Right now, Bitcoin has a market cap of around $1.3 trillion. Uh, gold, on the other hand, has a market cap of around $18 trillion. So the question that we need to ask ourselves and again, I'm, I'm re-emphasizing this question because I think it's really important for you and for me to think about it. It's more like a live brainstorming session together. So if we millennials become the richest generation on earth because we inherit $90 trillion worth of wealth, 
that wealth is probably in stocks, real estate, maybe cash uh, or other assets. What do you think is going to happen with that wealth? Are we going to sell some real estate or are we going to sell some of the stocks and reinvest some of that money into crypto or Bitcoin because we're more familiar with it, because we like it more compared to other asset classes? And if that happens, so if $90 trillion of wealth gets inherited, how much of that would flow into the crypto market? Would it be 10%, 20%, 1%? But even if it's a small percentage, if it's 90 trillion, a small percentage of that is still a lot of money, could be a few trillion. The crypto market cap right now, the Bitcoin market cap is 1.3 trillion. So if a few trillion would flow into Bitcoin in the next few years, that would also already mean that Bitcoin would go up with many multiples. And the point or the thesis of this video is that if you understand this wealth transfer that's going to happen in the next few years, um, and you have an assumption that some of that money is going to flow into Bitcoin, then again, you could argue that we are still very early with Bitcoin and that there's still a lot of headspace for Bitcoin to grow in value in the next few years. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on all of this. So uh, drop a comment below and let me know what your perspective is on all of this and how much money you believe will flow back into Bitcoin from this wealth transfer. All right, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. And uh, see you in the next video. Peace out.